what it includes, okay? You can still like something and you can still lose focus. Say, lose focus. All right, so sometimes when you lose focus, it's not because you don't want to pay attention, it just means something else is going to grab. Do y'all understand? So anytime when you pay attention, you are investing in your life. I want you to hear me loud and clear. When you're paying attention, how many of y'all have had money before? When you go to the store, you have to pay, right? In order to receive something, right? So guess what? In order to get the best out of life, you're going to have to learn how to pay attention. Attention is just like money. Wherever you pay it to, you'd be surprised what you get in return. Do y'all understand what I just said? Who heard what I just said? Raise your hand. All right, who would like to tell me what I just said? Because now, before I educate, I have to engage. Because guess what? I'm going to be testing to see if you what? Paying what? Exactly. So who heard what I just said? Raise your hand. Who heard what I just said? Who can tell me what I said? Raise your hand. Okay, I'm going to go to the youth person. I'm going to come to you as well, all right? Tell me what I just said. You said paying attention to money. Say it again, say it louder. You said paying attention and be like money. And be like money, why? Why do you think that? Because whoever you're paying attention to, you give yourself a problem. Exactly. Have y'all ever heard of someone saying you have to give in order to receive? Have y'all ever heard of that before? So if you pay attention, you'd be surprised what kind of benefits and blessings and rewards you get in return. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, you heard what I said. Tell me what you think of. You heard it. Pay attention. You get money out of it. That's true. That is true. Paying attention is like money, and sometimes whatever you pay attention to, you can get money, right? So, say, I'm going to give you an example. I've been up here talking, right? Ms. Jones just introduced me. I just gave you some two to three different points that you can use for the rest of your life. And I just tested to see if you were paying attention. What if I was giving out free scholarship money to the people that heard me? and paying attention. You see how your body language changed? What if I had five I said? Would you pay attention? You would pay attention? Why would you pay attention more? Is it because of the money I'm going to pay you? You think so? You said no? Why wouldn't you pay attention more if it was money? Why? Okay, if it's not about money, I'm glad that you said it. If it's not about money, what is it really about? It's about learning everything that you need. Give him a round of applause. Give them a round of applause. This is very, very important. Get your pen and paper out because we're gonna, I'm gonna test your engagement. I have engaged you before I educate you. Do you understand? I'm gonna show you how to keep uh, keep someone's attention. You see how I'm walking around and talking to people? You see my eye contact? You see my body language? Somebody tell me, what is my body? Y'all see how I'm standing, how I'm talking to y'all? What is my body language saying to you right now? What is not what I'm saying? But what is my body saying to you? Somebody tell me. What is my body like to say to each and every one in the room right now? What do you think? I'm trying to inform you. I'm trying to inform you. So what do you see? How am I walking? How am I talking? Describe it for me. Well, calm when you're not walking right. When you're not moving, I'm like calm. I'm calm. All right, so guess what? Does it look like I'm, based on how I'm looking at you, how I'm talking to you, how I'm walking, does it look like I want to be here? Does it look like I want to be here? So guess what, if I'm paying attention to you, I'm giving you my attention first, and I'm gonna show you how to pay it back to me. I'm gonna engage you by asking questions. So, I want you to write down on your piece of paper, ask the right question. I want you to, I'm gonna give you a cheat code in life. How many of y'all play video games? Anybody play video games? Anybody ever heard of a cheat code? You can put in the code and make your video game a little easier. Anybody ever heard of that? So life is a game to a lot of people, and I'm going to give you cheat codes today, all right? So what did, what did I ask you right now? Ask the right question. Now somebody tell me, what is powerful about asking the right question? No right or wrong answer, just tell me what you think. What is powerful? You want to answer it? Okay, what is powerful about asking the right question? What do you think? One more time for me. I like that. Say it one more time louder for me. You can get the right question too. If you ask the right question, you can get the answer you want to know. You just said, give them a round of applause. If you ask the right question, you get the information you're trying to know that you need to know. Thank you. What's your name? What's your name? Hmm? Lance. Nice to see you, man. Thank you. You're doing a great job. You had your hand up? Did you have your hand up? Why was so, what, what is so powerful about asking the right question? What do you think? You can't 
Because you get good information and you don't waste people's time. Give them a round of applause. What's your name? Isaiah. Isaiah, give Isaiah a round of applause. This is amazing. And I want y'all to understand something. This is a beautiful thing. Education is about to bring out something that you already have. I want y'all to pay close attention to me, all right? You are already brilliant. I need you to hear me loud and clear. What did I say? You are already what? You are already what? You are already what? Okay, so I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. I haven't given you that much information. I've just been asking questions. And I've been going around people in the room, and y'all said some of the most brilliant things that I haven't even given you this morning. I just proved to you that you are already possessing information before you even met me. Do y'all understand? So I'm going to tell you the importance of being engaged. I understand how hard it is to pay attention, right? Isn't it kind of hard to pay attention? And trust me, if y'all get distracted, I will not get offended, but I have to re-engage. Say re-engage. Re-engage. Some of us, when we're in class, naturally you're going to be distracted. All right? We just had a, um, a, um, a different activity, right? What did, what did y'all learn in that last activity? What was the point of that activity? Somebody tell me. Miss Kate, explain. You want to tell me what you learned? Okay, I'll come right around. Tell everybody your name first, okay? And then tell me what you learned about the last activity with the building going. So what did you learn? What's your name from? Leah. Leah? Nice to meet you, Leah. What did you learn in your last presentation, that last activity? Say it again. Okay, what did you learn? The activity with the building blocks that Ms. Kate had you all do? What is something that you learned? There's no right or wrong answer. I just want to know what you learned from. I cannot see. Yeah, sometimes you may not be able to see clearly, right? But you'll still have to follow directions. Did you learn that? Did anybody else learn that? Sometimes you may not be able to see, but you still have to listen, right? And follow directions, all right? Cover the right. Excuse me. 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 That's right. Working as a team is better than working by yourself. Right. How many of y'all agree with that? Raise your hand if you agree with it. Sometimes working as a team. All right, the next thing I'm going to give you as a cheat code, and I want you all to understand this. This is something that helped me out when I was your age. All right? Life is a team sport. Write that down. Life is a team sport. All right? Life is a team sport. Now, somebody tell me what do you think I mean by telling you that statement? Life is a team sport. What does that mean? What does that mean? All right, say your name for everyone and tell me what you think that means. Jay Wilson, and I think life is a team sport because you don't go through life by yourself and you have other people to help you. Thank you. Y'all get yes. Yes. Right? Even if you feel alone, I want you all to remember something. You did not get here by yourself. Repeat after me. You did not get here. You did not get here by yourself. You did not get here by yourself. This is going to be extremely important because life situations will make you feel alone. How many of y'all have ever been in a life situation you felt like you were the only one going through? Raise your hand. I, I feel that feeling all the time. Like, I must be the only person this is happening to or I have bad luck. You start getting sad. Have any of y'all ever felt that before? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. There's nothing wrong with having that feeling, but I want you to be careful about what you say to yourself. I want you to put down on your paper, I may feel alone, but I'm never by myself. I heard that. I may feel alone, but I'm never by myself. I may feel alone, but I am never by myself. Somebody tell me what you just wrote down. Somebody tell me. You may feel alone, but you're never by yourself. Say it out. I may feel alone, but I'm never by myself. Now, what does that mean to you all? Anybody want to tell me what that means to them? You want to tell me? Hold on, hold on, one second. Let me get you the microphone, okay? State your name for everybody so they know where it's coming from. 
And then, so what does that mean? So when you feel alone, everyone is with you, supporting you in every way. Yeah, you got to say I'm out of I want y'all to understand something. Have y'all ever seen boxing before? Have y'all ever seen boxing? The sport of boxing? Raise your hand if you've ever seen it. Okay. When you're in a boxing ring, I want y'all to understand sometimes life makes you feel like you're in a boxing ring by yourself. But guess what? Have y'all seen some of those sports events where it's just that one boxer in the ring with his opponent, but he's surrounded by thousands of people? Have y'all ever seen that before? Okay. I'm going to get you to understand something very, very, that's very, very important. Sometimes even if we're facing adversity by ourselves, we're going to feel alone. But please do not ignore how much support you have that surrounds you. Do y'all understand what I just said? Yeah. Sometimes you will be in a fight ring by yourself. You're going to be having to deal with a lot of things in life by yourself. But I don't want you to ignore the team that you have. Life is what? A team what? Life is a team sport. Say it again. Life is a team sport. Life is a team sport. And I want y'all to understand, when you have that alone feeling, it's going to be important to understand who you are. I want you to write down the next question. Y'all ready? Here's your next question. What is my purpose? Put that on your piece of paper. What? is my purpose. That's one of the most important questions you will ever ask yourself and you will have to keep asking yourself that every day. What is my purpose? Now, does anybody in the room know how to answer that question already? What is my purpose? Anybody know how to answer it? Okay. All right. Say your name again, okay? Say your name and tell everybody what is your purpose. I'm Jaya, and everyone's purpose is to feel a happy community. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not proving it to you. I'm exposing you. You are already brilliant. Say it. I am already brilliant. I am already brilliant. See, one of the things about your purpose in life, if you don't know your purpose, somebody's going to give you one. I need you to hear me loud and clear. If you don't know your purpose, somebody's going to walk up to you and give you one. I'm going to give you something that I learned around your age, okay? Around when I was 10 or 11 years old, and of course you can look at me, right? You know, I told you, Mr. Jones said, my nickname is Big Chris. Y'all can see that I'm a big person, right? And I wear this for pride because a lot of things that I had to do, I played football, Wrestle, I did a lot of things besides benefiting me. Do y'all understand? Also, too, my size helped me to protect the people that I love. How many people like protecting people you love? Raise your hand. Okay, so my size benefited me, okay? But this is the thing I want you all to understand. The things that benefit you do not define you. I'm going to say it one more time. The things that benefit you do not define you. Now, I just gave a really important statement. Somebody tell me what I just said. All right, we'll come right back to you two. The things that benefit you do not define you. Give them a round of applause. What did I just say? All right, somebody tell me what it means. You can tell me what I said. Tell me what it means. Who can tell me what that means? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to come right to you. Say your name, everyone. What do you know about? Tara. Tara? Your name. What do you think I mean by the things that give you to help define you? Well, the most important thing is that even though it may give you, it is not your character. Say that part of it. And will build you your character, right? So, you say, Tara? Give Tara a I'm going to give you an example. How many of y'all play sports? All right. How many of y'all draw like uh, doing art or creating artwork? How many of y'all like math or different specific subjects, right? Science, reading, things of that nature. You like a lot of things that benefit you. Is that correct? Now check this out. 
When I was your age, I was surrounded by a lot of people who were really involved in sports. All my sports people, raise your hand again. Raise your hand again. Okay. Now, guess what? Some people, when I was growing up, and somebody had explained this to me, sometimes the things that benefit you also benefit the people around you. I'm going to say it again. Some of the things that benefit you can also benefit the people around you. So say for instance, you're good at basketball. You may benefit from it, but some of your friends and family may see an opportunity for them to grow off of it too. Do y'all understand? So they may not want to hurt you or harm you, but sometimes people can come up to you and say, you were born to play basketball. You were born to play football. You were born to do this and you were born to do that. And I want you to question this. Now here's the right question. What was I born to do? What was I born to do? The right question is better than the right answer, y'all. The right question is better than the right answer. Because if you don't know how to formulate the right question, you will start believing every answer people give you. I want y'all to hear me loud and clear. If you don't know how to ask the right question, you'll start believing everybody else's answers about you. Okay? So if you don't know why you were born, I could come up here and say, you know what? You were born to build motorcycles. You were born to do this. Can you tell me something that you like to do? And tell me your name for you. Ace, video games. So what if I came up to you and said, Ace, you were born to play video games? Would I be accurate or not? I would be accurate. And I'm going to give you an example. This is something I want you to be very careful. Say, Ace, right? Now, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you a cheat code in life. Y'all paying attention? Are we engaged? Ace just said something very important. I want you to hear it. And I asked you what you like to do, right? And if I told you you were born to play video games, I want y'all to pay close attention to what I'm about to say. If I was not there when you were born, I cannot tell you what you were born to <laughs> do. Right. Did y'all hear what I just said? I cannot tell Ace he was born to do something just because he likes it. That may not be my business. Do y'all understand? Because just because you're good at something, somebody can say you were born to do it, and if it's snatched away from you, you can get sad and you start giving up on yourself. Do y'all understand what I just said? You were born to do millions of things. Do y'all understand what I just said? You play video games, you happen to like it. That's one of the many things you're gonna do for the rest of your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if somebody takes video games away from you, that's just one of the many things you, you were born to do. Does that make sense? I don't want you to ever, and I'm talking to everyone, I'm looking at you, but I'm talking to everyone. Never, ever, ever, ever minimize your life to doing one thing. I want you to write it down. Never minimize your life to doing one thing. Remember, I said it earlier, just because it benefits you doesn't mean that it defines you. Didn't I tell you that earlier? Just because you benefit from it doesn't mean that's all you're supposed to be doing. Now, let me give you an example. Has anybody here seen a plant or a tree? Anybody seen a plant before? Anybody seen a tree before? All right, so some, somebody tell me, keep your hands up if you've seen it. What, uh, what different things can a plant do? What does a plant do? Tell me your name. 
What's your name? Marquise. Thank you for giving up Marquise. So you know what I mean? What's your name too, okay? <laughs> he got all the smoke. I think baseballs. I always believe in myself and <laughs> and other baseball people encourage me. You gotta give it up. <laughs> How you want to be treated. Give a round of applause. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. I'm going to show you why. In a minute. Hands up. Come around. What is self respect? To me, self respect means like, take care of yourself. Because, like, you know, some people just don't have to do that. Exactly. Thank you. Other people don't have what they have, so you have to be appreciative. Self respect. What is self respect? Oh, that's right. Exactly. Dang. And then this is me. I'm going to come around and what's your name again? Daddy. Daddy? Daddy. 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 Thank you. I'll give it for Daddy. That is extremely important. She said you have to show respect in order to what? Get respect. In order to get respect. Say it with me. Show respect in order to get respect. Show respect in order to get respect. That's extremely important. I'm going to come back to you. Self-respect. Actions 
speak louder than words. Amen. You can say you love yourself, but Show if you me. hate yourself with your actions, that's what people believe. You can say you respect yourself, but people believe what you do. You can say you look attractive. You can say you are clean and well put together, but if you don't take time and invest in yourself and how you present yourself to the world, people believe what you do. Do y'all understand? So I'm going to give you an example. Do y'all see what I have on today? Yeah. Anybody see what I have on? Yeah. Now, this is not like a suit and a movie. I'm not in a job or anything like that, right? But what I have on, does it look like I respect myself? At a certain, at least at a small level. Does it look like I respect myself? Why? Why would somebody say it looks like I respect myself? What do I have on or how do I look that tells you I respect myself? Somebody tell me. Anybody? What do I have on to say I respect myself? You just like a casual person. Thank you. Just like a casual person. Does it look like I took some time to put this together? Yes. Okay, now you see I have on a t-shirt, I have on a shirt. Do you see my shirt? Now what does my shirt look like? It's a black shirt with Kevin Gates on it. It's Kevin Gates. Actually, you know what? It's funny. That's the first time I, I can see how you say that. This is a, a person. Uh, do y'all see what's on the front of this? Do y'all see what's on the front of it? Yeah. What does the person have on? Do y'all see it? Uh, oh, graduation suit. A graduation suit, a cap and a gown, right? Yeah. He has a cap and gown, right? Yeah. Y'all see it? What do we, why, when people have on caps and gowns, what does that mean? Graduation. They're about to graduate, they're about to move forward, they're about to progress, they're about to go to another level. Yeah. Do y'all know this is a rap album? Yeah. Do y'all know this is a rap album? Some of y'all didn't know that, did you? You see that for an advisory at the bottom, some of y'all caught that. But I want y'all to understand something. When I was your age, I used to really believe what people showed me before I heard what they said. So this caught my attention. I found out that graduating helped people go far in life. So I saw somebody who was rapping, but they put this on the front of their shirt. And I said, well, it looks like this person may be learning something. So let me take a listen to it. And this CD got me through my freshman year in college. Wow, great. You heard what I just said? Yeah. This show got that CD got me through my, my freshman year in college. The reason why I'm wearing this shirt is because it means something to me. It helped me respect myself. Okay. And so when I'm wearing things that reminded me to respect myself, I walk and talk differently. Do y'all hear me? Do y'all hear me? So the things that you put on your body will magnify your body language. Put down body language. Put down body language. B-O-D-Y. B-O-D-Y. Language. L-A-N-G. L-A-N-G. U-A-G-E. Body language. Didn't I just tell you earlier, actions speak louder than words? So guess what? People believe what you do with your body before you start moving with your mouth. Y'all understand? The places you decide to put your body in sends out a message to the world. Did y'all just hear Y'all heard me? Wherever you choose to place your body, I don't care if you're hanging out with the wrong people, if you don't know if that you're somewhere where you're not supposed to be, your presence is telling everyone a message. If you're at the wrong place and people told you not to go there and you're there anyway, you know how your parents say, I'll get out of there over there? And guess what? You're not saying anything, but you take your body over there, what message are you giving to your parents? <laughs> you don't care what else you're saying. Huh? Disrespect what you're saying. That's where I want to be, but guess what it always is? Your parents are actually in charge of your well-being, right? So if they ask you not to be somewhere, sometimes we may not understand a lot of things, but you have to respect yourself so you can respect other people. If your parents say a certain place is dangerous, guess what? It's a reason why they don't want your body there. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you why. 
I lost a lot of people who were good hearted people, but they were in the wrong place with the wrong people at, at the, the wrong, wrong time. time. Right. Did you hear me? They were with the wrong people, wrong place, wrong time. That doesn't mean they were bad people. They were smarter than me. They had more resources than me. They had a lot more things going, but it took that one decision to put uh -huh. the wrong place, wrong people, and what? Wrong time. You got a lot of adults that are around you all are going to tell you about the mistakes they made, or they're going to be honest about the mistakes they witnessed other people make. Do y'all understand? What did I say to them? Life is what? Life is what? Team sport. Trust me, your life coaches gave birth to you. Okay. They're telling you, even if they're not perfect, they're going to make mistakes, but guess what? Your parents are going to share the mistakes with you so you don't have to make them. Do y'all understand? Nothing wastes more time than repeating mistakes somebody warns you about. You can print out money, can't you? Have you seen people print it? It's made out of paper, right? So they print it off. Can you print out time? No. Can you print off another light just because you feel like it? No. So guess what? Don't spend your time with something that's easily replaceable. You get one life. You won't borrow time. I know that's Spend right. Spend it wisely. Did I ask you to pay attention at the very beginning? Paying attention is you investing your time and attention. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Now, this is the thing. The reason why I asked you all earlier, have y'all seen people in school arguing with each other, going back and forth? I told y'all it was a peer behavior, right? Teachers used to get me out of class to make two people, they may not get along, but I at least listened up to who the problem was so they would stop fighting. I was going ahead at 10 years old. Do y'all understand? Why? How many of y'all have been in a position where adults were arguing and you knew what they were arguing about, but you thought you were too young to say something? How many of y'all heard some adults argue? You knew the answer right then, but you didn't have enough courage or even power to say anything. I'm going to tell you how my career started. My parents used to argue all the time. It got to the point where they would use my name and they would pay attention, right? And when I started paying attention when people were saying they were arguing, guess what I found out? Usually people who are arguing are saying the same thing they just stopped listening a long time ago. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I just said? People who are arguing, sometimes they're saying the same thing, they just stop listening. Because the argument is when people stop talking. Did y'all hear what I just said? When people argue, that means they stop talking, now they're just trying to repeat. Y'all understand what I just said? So when you're at school and you see people arguing and repeating with each other, that means somebody stopped listening. And guess what? When you see people stop listening, that's when it's your time to start. That's right. Somebody tell me what I just said. What did I just say? That's when it's your time to start listening and paying attention. But guess what I just guess what I just told you all? Usually when people stop paying attention, that's when they start arguing, right? Yeah. What usually happens after arguments? Fights. 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 What usually happens after fights? Deal time. A, a lot of horrific things happen after fights. So y'all know that, right? So guess what? When you find out people stop listening, you start paying attention and you need to take your body out of the wrong place at the wrong time. Y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. As soon as you start seeing things like that, if you can help it, you need to remove yourself and you need to observe what's going on so you don't repeat those yeah. mistakes. Yeah. Sometimes, no matter how old you are, I want y'all to pay attention. Pay close attention to me. I know it is. I know we're in Rome here in Rome West. I need that union. Just because you're young doesn't mean you're not the most mature person in the room. I know that's right. Some of you all may end up saving an adult's life with your wisdom. Just because you're young doesn't mean you don't know how to change the world yet. Do y'all hear what I just said? I already said you already what? You already brilliant, right? So guess what? You got a lot of people who are older than you who don't know how to listen yet. Do y'all understand what I just said? So if you start listening right now and paying attention at your age right now, do you know how many older people you can end up helping? A lot. And guess what happens? When I was your age, 
When people were arguing, I knew how to stop the argument and start the conversation. And guess what I ended up doing? I made my own environment safer by knowing what to do and when to do it. Okay. You all understand what I'm saying? And I didn't say I'm too young to stop arguing. I just cared enough about myself. I had enough self-respect to show people how I felt about myself. And guess what? They followed me. People who respect themselves usually have people follow them. People who are in leadership positions, they respect themselves. They usually provide an example and they have influence. Y'all say influence. 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 Have y'all ever seen a friend do something and you wanted to join in because of the phone? Have y'all ever seen that before? Somebody's a fan of basketball, you got to go home play. Or somebody who went to the next one video game, go home and play. <laughs> okay. You are to find out how fun it is to hold yourself in high regard. Tell them right now. When you walk into a room, when you get older, there, you keep it quite this. People your age may not have the words to tell you, but when you get my age, somebody's going to come up to you and say, I had so much respect for you when we were growing up. I promise you it's going to happen. People may not know how to do it right now, but they're going to come up and say, you know what, man? I remember you from school. You was always paying attention. You never was in the car. You used to always respect the others. You always were listening to your parents. You always help people learn a little bit more, right? I'm telling you, just because you don't hear it now, doesn't mean people ain't learning from you. Remember, people believe what you do, so I want you to understand. The best way to respect yourself is to know why you're here. You remember that first question, why was I born? Remember that question I asked you right now? I want that question does not have one answer. That's the reason why I didn't ask you to answer. That question needs to be asked every day because it's going to reset you every day. It's going to help you refocus about what you're supposed to do with your life every day. Because if you don't question why you were born, what did I tell you earlier? Somebody's going to make someone to tell you. That's yes, right. You don't understand what I just said. I'm going to tell you this. What am I doing all the time? Because I'm talking about All right? Okay, good. All right. So now, like I said before, come out with peer meeting, right? I told you that. How many of y'all know about peer pressure? Anybody ever heard of peer pressure before? Somebody tell me what peer pressure. Might tell me what peer pressure is. What's your name? Grace. 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 Nice to meet you. What's peer pressure? Peer pressure is when you get so much time to think you should do something that you shouldn't do. That's right. Now give Grace a round of applause. Anybody else? Anybody else? Peer pressure, yes. Peer pressure would be a good thing or a bad thing. It would be a good thing or a bad thing. Tell me why. 1235. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Give me a round of applause. I'm going to give you something that's going to clear up any confusion about peer pressure. I'm going to tell you, you don't have to agree with me, but I need to share with you what helped me when I was growing up. Y'all ready? Put your pen in your hand. I want you to write down peer pressure. Put it on your paper, please. Peer pressure. This is where people who don't know why they were born, they usually succumb or fall for this. I need y'all to hear me loud and clear. The people who don't know why they're here always fall from the pressure from their peers. I'm going to say it again. The people who have no idea why they're here, sometimes they fall under the pressure of their peers. Peer pressure. The things that usually don't fit and are not supposed to go in a certain way, some people apply pressure. You all understand? Sometimes pressure is used when something is not even supposed to be done. You all understand? Usually if something feels right, it doesn't take pressure, it just takes a little bit of information. Amen. But if I got to apply pressure to you, that means there's a hesitation somewhere. I want you all to write down the word hesitation. Hesitation. I'm going to spell it for you. Hesitation. H-E-S. H-E-S. I-T. A-T. I-O-N. Hesitation. That peer pressure that you're feeling, 
when you're hesitating, that means something is telling you you need to think before you do. Something is telling you that you must think before you do. Usually, peer pressure is taking place when you know you're not supposed to be doing something. What helps me, I'm going to give you a cheat code to help me in my life. Look at peer pressure as something that may be negative. I need you to hear me loud and clear. Peer pressure is something that could be negative, right? Your true friends will inform and educate you. They will never pressure you. I need you to hear me. Your true friends, I want you to write, my true friends will inform and educate you. They will never pressure you. Your true friends will inform and educate. I mean, they will give you some information and they will at least talk to you about it and see it as the best thing for you to do. They will not pressure you. And I want y'all to understand something. One thing that saved my life is I found out the difference between my friends and my peers. I know that's right. Just because somebody is your peer, you need to stop calling them your friend. That's right. Yeah, hear what I just said. Peers apply pressure. Friends get information. Yeah, heard what I just said. Your peers may apply pressure. They will build up a natural hesitation. But your friends will say, hey, your peer pressure will say this. I'll give you an example. Hey, man, I'm not supposed to have my candy in class, but I got some candy. I'm going to show you how to eat. Right before this wave come back, and we'll be straight, man. And you just say, man, I don't want to get what you're doing. Guess what a peer pressure does? Does a peer start pressure you by saying, oh man, you're wrong. Then they start degrading you sometimes, or trying to get you to, to go with them by kind of belittling you. I'm going to give you a cheat code in life. If I have to make you small in order to be with me, that means I'm not your friend. Mm -hmm. If I have to put you down in order to convince you to do what I'm doing, that means I'm literally putting you down with the action itself. Uh -huh. I need y'all to hear me. Because if I want you to do something, and you, you're not involved in it, and I start trying to insult you, I just get paid up here, and I'm applying pressure. Uh -huh. I'm not your friend. And I need y'all to be careful about calling your peers your friends. All right? Now do me a favor. Y'all stand up. Everybody stand up for me. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. I want you to reach to the sky, reach to the sky. As, as far as you can, try to touch the ceiling with your fingertips. Try to touch the ceiling with your fingertips. Try to touch the ceiling with your fingertips. All right, I want y'all to get some space real quick. Get my, get fingertip length. Get fingertip length between each other. Put both of your hands out like this. Make sure you're not touching anybody. Make sure you're not touching anybody, okay? Make sure you're not touching anybody, all right? This is what I want you to do. Without your hand, I want you to put your hands like this in front of you. Touch, make your uh, fist touch in front of you. Like this. You see this? Make your fist touch in front of you and slowly go back left. The top of your body. Go left, left, and right. Left, left, and right. Left, right. Left, right. Alright, reach up to the ceiling again. Try to touch the ceiling with your fingertips. Try to touch it. Stretch, stretch. Stretch, stretch, stretch. All right, all right, have a seat, have a seat for me. Have a seat for me. Now some of y'all thought we were trying to play a game, right? <laughs> Wake some up. Some of y'all thought we were trying to play a game, right? All right, have y'all ever um, been playing a video game or are you on your computer and you get slow and you got to reboot it? Have you ever had to do that before? Our brain acts just like a computer, I just had to remove it for you. Okay? <laughs> You've been listening to my voice for a long time, so naturally your attention span is going to go down a little bit, right? So I ask you to move and get the blood circulating so it can reboot your computer. When you're in class and you're getting bored but you want to pay attention but it's hard, ask your teacher, can you stretch? Ask them, can you stand up? Ask them, can you get some blood moving? Because guess what? Is your brain an organ? Is your brain an organ? And every organ needs what? Blood flow? Guess what? If you want to reactivate your brain, and you reactivate your brain, start moving around and get blood right back to the brain. That's how you're going to pay attention. Mm -hmm. I showed you another cheat code to get you through school. It's not about, sometimes it's not about smart and dumb. It's about doing what works. Do y'all understand? Mm -hmm. 
It's about doing what works. I know some of the smartest people in the world that cannot pay attention. They can't pay attention. They're smart, but it's hard for them to pay attention. Okay? So now, we were talking about peer pressure, right? And friends, influence, and educating. So I want y'all to understand something. For the rest of your life, y'all sit up for me. Y'all see anybody not paying attention? Y'all tell me. I understand this law. I trust it. I get it. I get it. If it's born, it's just born. But I still got to do it. I can't just not look at you, right? But if you're around for the rest of your life, you're around different types of people, I need y'all to understand something. We're witnessing adults that are falling for peer pressure now. Have y'all seen some of that before? Raise your hand if you've seen adults fall under peer pressure before. So I need you to understand, it doesn't matter your age, it matters what you're willing to do with your life. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? You're not too young to start paying attention and influencing your life for the better. Don't let age keep you from growing and doing miraculous things because you're young. I'm telling you, if the tree can do all of those things we said before, you're a human being. You're, you're made in the image of the most powerful entity in existence. And they made you. He made you. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So you got so many different things you can do with your life. Do not just go under the way just trying to be liked by people who are not your friends. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I got grown people who still have not figured out peer pressure and their lives are getting harder and harder by the day. I need y'all to start practicing right now. Hey, guys, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? I need y'all to start practicing right now. When you're dealing with peer pressure, you need to understand the difference between peers and your friends. Say it with me. Your peers and your friends. Peers and my friends. My peers and my friends. So now somebody tell me, what is a peer now? Since you know the difference between your peer and your friends, somebody tell me the difference. Here you go. People who put pressure you to use the people who Give them a round of applause. Round of applause. Exactly. All right. All right. We got one more. Here we go. Thank you. 
Based on what you heard today, some of the thoughts that you had, I want you to write down the best question you can think of and I'm answering for you. I want you to write down the best question you can think of. I don't care what it is. Nothing is on limits. Write down the best question. Look at your notes too. You don't have to remember what I said. Look at your notes. That's the reason why I asked you to write this stuff down, right? So, before you leave, I want you to write down the best question you can think of. Do not rush yourself. Take your time. Don't rush yourself. Because now I'm going to show you how you're going to educate yourself for the rest of your life. You know, I'm grateful when somebody gives you. You go out there and be it in the world while having the best question possible. Some of us have learned more about this to say, have you ever been in your sick? Oh, I just have an anxious question. Why did nobody teach me this? Did you ever heard of somebody ask that before? Why did somebody teach me this, right? Today, I'm going to change that question into, why did I ask the question? Why did I ask the question? Now, look at your paper, I'm going to leave you all alone, let you concentrate. Write down the best question you can think of. Yes, write your own question. Right now, the best question you can think of when I answer for it. Go ahead. I'll give you a few minutes to concentrate. You can write whatever you want if you want. Let your mind flow. Keep paying attention. Try to look at your neighbor so you can say a good friend when you're here. Sometimes looking at each other with distraction. Look at your paper. Write down as many questions as you can think of, or write down the most important one. If you're done with your question, I want you to come up and put it in the basket of this paper. If you're done writing your question. Best question you can think of, the best one. Because your question is not only going to educate you, it's going to educate your friends and your peers in the room. And it may educate some adults, you never know. Because I will tell you this adults become better people when children ask some of the best questions. I'm telling you this. Did y'all know that? I'm going to say it again. What I'm doing right now, I've got better at where I'm done or what I'm doing by the questions that people your age ask you. Because the way you think, I may not see the same thing you have to do with every day in this world, right? So you have a perspective that you have a brilliance that I may not have had the chance to tap into. So your questions will make me better. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason I want y'all to ask questions. I'm gonna ask them. I'm gonna keep these questions. I'm gonna sit down and try to write some things to help me. And your questions will make me better. Right? Who else is here writing their questions? Anybody else here writing? Okay, take your time. No pressure. Take your time. The best question for open three doors, I promise you.
Some of these questions are beautiful. Beautiful questions. Some of the most brilliant questions I've seen. Really. Y'all have done a great job today, y'all. Y'all have done a great job. I've been around a lot of kids, and y'all are some of the most intensive human beings that I've been around in my life. Because right now, I want to let you know, social media, TV, all these electronics and technology, it's hard for a lot of people to pay attention for 4 to 15 to 20 minutes. And if y'all sit here for about an hour and pay most attention like this, and you still, I'm telling you, a lot of people are age, and a lot of people are older than you. They do not know how to do this in this show for you guys. And you got to hear me say that. So don't let your age deter you from knowing how powerful you can be. So we all know how to do things. A lot of people call over you and have not figured out how to stay still and be distracted with their attention. So I will stress you all the time. Anybody still want to have questions? Everybody good? All right, let's go. Now, we got two minutes, so this is what we want. Okay, just take your time on the rest, and I'm going to start off, okay? I'm going to start off with you. Now, we got two minutes, we got your pen and paper, because we're not asking you questions. I want you to write down the notes, because some of these things that you may have thought of, I'm going to give you an answer to them, okay? All right. Okay, somebody asked who is the best basketball player in any game? And the famous team. Best basketball player in the NBA, that's what we are in all that. I said, just pick one and just stick with it, okay? I, if you want to know I'm a fan, I like the Brown fan, I like the secretary, I like everybody who cares about the school. All right? Thank you for the question. All right. Oh, wow. Great question. I thought you guys were great people in the room. How did God make us? That's right. <laughs> How did God make us? Man, that is a loaded question. And I'm going to respect you like this. First of all, I need to respect the question. I let you know I cannot speak for God. I want you to hear me say this, right? Is that what I just said? I cannot speak for God, but I can tell you what I know. He made you on purpose and with intent. Is that what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? People say, how? There's a lot of things that happen in order to make you the way you are. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm a new parent now. And just watching human beings grow this out of the stomach, I promise you, I'm not going to ask you. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I will let you know is that God made you on purpose and with intent. Okay? Sometimes in order to get you assigned, so, if you don't know God, question. Ask people, what is their relationship with God? What does it look like? All right? And then build your relationship because you need to see other people's relationship too so you have something else to draw off of. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what is a purpose? Great question. Great question. What is a purpose? All right. So, you remember how I asked you all earlier what is the tree to do? What is the purpose of the tree? And we had so many different things that trees do, right? So, when we made the trees, God made the entire world and universe, right? So, when He created trees, He created trees to do specific things. They have purpose, right? They have to serve that purpose. Your purpose is connected to a service. You know what I'm saying? What I just said. And this is not the only definition of purpose, but I want you all to start questioning what I'm saying. A purpose is to be served for a greater purpose. You know what I'm saying? So how you were born, the ways you be active, what you've been through from, all your strengths and things you're good at, guess what? If you have a gift, 
they get that as a purpose. So let me give you an example. How many of y'all have seen the gift of Christmas before? All right? Certain gifts have certain purpose outside of them, right? So if somebody gave you some jewelry, the purpose of their jewelry was to make wear it, and for it didn't last nice you, right? If somebody might give you a remote control car, right? Somebody might give you a video game, right? Those different gifts have specific purpose. Every one of your gifts that you receive, they have a purpose behind them. The best way to find your purpose is to keep questioning what that purpose is. And you'll keep finding it. There's no one answer, there's no one time you understand. As you keep going in life, your purpose will keep presenting itself over yes, and over again in different ways, in different environments, with different people. So that's the reason I want you all to put yourself in the box and think you're supposed to do one thing. Every day that God puts life in your life, your purpose is going to evolve. You know what I'm saying? What I just said, you've been doing things for a long time, and they're going to have to get better and more attentive. They're going to have a lot more discipline, and you're going to have a lot of things you're going to be good at. But with God in your life, you're going to be doing so many different things. So your purpose has multiple levels to it. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Here we go. Who controls me? Great question. Who controls me? One thing I find out is self-discipline and self-respect, I uh, can keep myself under control for a lot of things. Now guess what? I'm going to be honest with you. There are certain habits that I still have that influence my behavior. And guess what? It doesn't control me. I give up my control. Y'all heard what I just said? It doesn't control me unless I give permission. And I want you to hear me loud and clear. Permission is how you give up your power. Whatever you permit, you just gave them your power. So nothing controls you unless you give up your control. Do you understand what I just said? All right, here we go. How to help people get along. Sometimes to help people get along is to make sure that you, your character stays consistent. I want to try to say it with consistent. Consistent. Anybody know what consistent means? I'm going to tell you. Consistent means you're going to be very, you're going to maintain your character and your behavior no matter what the world is doing around you. You know what I'm saying? Say for instance, I'm going to give you an example. How to help people get along. Sometimes when you're calm, people can look at your body language and it's going to mimic you as well. Also, too, the best way to help people get along is to help them understand where people are getting is kind of confused. Have y'all ever seen someone assume the worst out of other words? Or maybe an assumption out of you? Somebody blames you for something you didn't do just based on how they come about you? Anybody ever had that before? Usually when people are not getting along, that means somebody stops talking, and when people stop talking, they start assuming. Mm -hmm. When they start assuming, they start accusing. When they start accusing, they start arguing. Mm -hmm. When they start arguing, they start fighting. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So once I start getting communication broken, that's how it starts. Uh, what to do if you get stuck? All right, I'm going to give you a sheet of the plan. Procrastination. I'm going to break it out the word for you. How many of you, anybody here heard about procrastination before? All right, procrastination, some people thought it was just like delaying something for a later time. I'm going to give you a little more powerful definition that helped me. Procrastination, I'm going to break it out in three parts. Pro means you support something, right? Crash means the access of growth or the regression of life. Crash. Nation means your people and everything you try to build on this earth. So guess what procrastination means to me? You support the end of everything you try to build. You heard what I said? Procrastination is you supporting the end of anything you try to support and anything you try to build. So procrastination can end a lot of great things. Procrastination is very dangerous. Okay? It's the difference between having caution and having procrastination. Caution is when you face yourself and you never stop progressing. Procrastination is when you stop because you're scared when you feel like you're not worthy of it. I was supposed to have my book last year. I procrastinated for no other reason than I had to be honest with myself. I'm not I'm supporting, not supporting my family like I had my book. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that procrastination is much more detrimental than you think. Uh, all right, said, okay. How do I show the body language? Beautiful. How do I show the body language? First, 
Making body language, eye contact. Say it with your eye contact. Eye contact. Say it with your eye contact. All right, this is what everybody show me eye contact real quick. Show me eye contact. Everybody look at me directly in the face. Directly in the face. All right? Try to hold it as long as you can when I'm talking. Try to hold it as long as you can when I'm talking. So I'm going to give you more body language. Uh, try to show you body language. Your eyes show what you're paying attention to before you have to say anything, all right? So if you're looking directly at someone, someone knows you're paying attention. That's the first key to body language. Eye contact, what you write down. Eye contact. Eye contact. Now, I'm not asking you to confuse that with rolling your eyes. That's different. That's totally different. And I know sometimes when we're in heated discussions with our parents, that's why we may be authority and you're sharing at them. This is what I want you to know. This is what I want you to do. Because I had breakfast at your age. If you're in a heated discussion with a parent or an elder, let them know I'm showing eye contact and eye respect. You have to let them know. Let them know. But some people look at eye contact as a threat. So I want you to know how to communicate with your body members sometimes. To so say, look, I'm going to be looking at you the whole time because I guess we pay attention to each other. You all right with this issue? All right, she's got this thing. But when you have your eye contact, that's what happens. You can see that. And I, you can tell right? And I ask you to look at me. As soon as you look at me, your shoulders move, your whole body moves towards what you're looking at, right? So, guess what? Body language is depending on your focus. Whatever you're looking at, your whole body will start turning towards it. You know what I'm saying? That way, you're going to respect yourself. But sometimes people look at this respect as turning your back on them, right? Y'all ever heard that before? Guess what? If you're looking at someone, your shoulders can naturally move. And you know, wherever your shoulders move, your torso will move, your feet will move, and the next thing you know, your entire body is in some of the form. It starts with the eyes. Have you ever heard of your eyes are witness to the soul? Anybody heard mm -hmm. of that? Okay, so guess what? The best way to show people what type of soul you have is look at your eyes. Okay, it's not showing fear, it's not showing disrespect, it's showing self respect. Make sure you tell them. All right. Uh, what is hesitation? Hesitation is when any time you get shocked because you're scared or you may not understand what's going on. That's hesitation. Any time you get scared. Alright? There's a difference between being stagnant and being still. Stagnant is when you have no progression whatsoever, you just stuck. Okay? Being still is, have you ever seen uh, some of those spaceships where they're stuck up in their faces up in there and then they take off? Have you ever seen those spaceships going in space? It was still first, but it had a purpose and it moved the rest of the world. That's the difference between being still and stagnant. Stagnant is when you're standing by yourself, not doing anything, but you have no direction. Still is when you're facing somewhere, you know you're not going to go, but you're planning on when you're going to go. Think of a spaceship as being still. When it's time to take off, you know exactly where to go, how much you need to go on. Okay? Oh, how to read people's body, how to read people's body and how to protect yourself. Great question. Great question. If people are not looking at you in the eyes, pay attention. You hear me? If people are not, if people can't look at you in the eyes, and honestly, too, you know, the best way to respect yourself is to make sure the people around you are respecting you, too. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's hard to respect yourself when you allow them to do this respect. Because anything that you allow people to believe that you believe in that, too. Okay, so if you run your friends, this has to be you want to look at it. Now, all four of them are going to face. You need to believe it. Because that person may not be respecting you at that moment. And guess what? Friends respect you. Sometimes people don't. Okay? Sometimes people switch in between you and a friend, and you need to respect what you're looking at. Sometimes your friend can switch on you until they appear to you. And you need to believe it, and you need to move somewhere from your friend's You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? I'm going to be honest with you, when I was in college, people who could not look you in, in the face, that means they either they said something negative about you, or they allow somebody else to say it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What I said, the negativity comes out of people's body language all the time, so they can't look at you, or they feel like it's like you another sheep called the line. When you walk in that room and people start scattering, like roaches with a black cloud, you need to believe it. <laughs> You need to believe it. I mentioned I was talking to you any time. Somebody scares you like roaches when the light is going on. It's because they were doing something that blew up. You heard what I just said? If 
you walk into a room, all of a sudden people that scatter around for you, and there's something that's going on, believe what you saw, but do not assume anything. Don't start blaming people for things that you don't know about. You know what I'm saying? Just believe what you see, you know that, you sit back and you observe. Ask questions before you make a statement. You heard me? Somebody tell you what I said. Ask questions before you make one. Thank you. You make a statement and you don't know the information, that's how you start a woman. Sit back and observe. <laughs> okay. Um, I did not choose to listen to my life coaches. Okay. Um, I don't know personally why you didn't listen to them, but I'm going to tell you why people don't pay attention. They may not know how important something is, and I'm going to be honest with you, if I'm not working, I'm not going to be able to talk about this. A lot of people don't know how to pay attention. Is that what I'm saying? Uh -huh. What y'all hear me about it? Some people, who are like something, I heard a young man in fourth grade talking to somebody that changed my life. He was in the past, he was all over the place. I'm talking, he could not say that. He could not be made. I mean, anything he asked you to do, you could do, right? And one day, he was, he was in the classroom, the other person, and I said, young man, I've been asking you to control yourself. Do you not know how to control yourself? Guess what he said? No, sir, I really don't. People keep telling me that they don't have to teach me yet. Wow. And so, I'm telling you, you're so brilliant when you're honest. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that fourth grader helped me understand that before I have expectations of young people, I have to teach them first. We can't just come in and expect you to know everything just by being obedient. You can't obey unless you've been educated. And usually when people are not obedient, it's not because they're rebelling, it's because they have no idea what the world is going on and they're just trying to figure it out. And sometimes when they do it good enough, they get punished. And punishment is not education, it's program. You know what I'm saying? So if somebody is yelling at you and they're not doing it, you don't understand, you don't understand something. As a child, as a young person, you do have the opportunity to ask them to please educate me. You're telling them to me, but please show me what you're talking about. Okay? That question will be better than any action. Uh, how do I take things and I learn and apply it to life? It's just like sports and video games. Practice. Practice. Guess what? When they young man say he didn't know how to control himself, guess what I had to do every day before we started class? Practice. If I can practice football two or three times a week, I at least can practice self-control every day. Football practice at least an hour, right? Self-control can take five to ten minutes. You tell me you can't practice every day? If life is a team sport, everything else is winning life, we need to practice. Not just telling you to do what I say. With you, I coach you, teach you, practice. If you have a law that are asking you to do things and they haven't taught you how to do it, guess what I'm asking you to do? Ask them to show you and teach you until you get it. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to obey the pressure when you have no idea what you're doing. So if you don't know how to do what they're asking you to do yet, say please, before we get into a deep battle and you yell at me, when we're getting along, you sit down and show me what you mean by cleaning my room from the spotless. Because you see spots, and I don't see spots. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have this thing about spotless. I still don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? So when she sees spots, and I say, well, now, the conversation is going to have to say, can you walk around the room and literally point out which spot you're talking about? I'm going to take a picture. If you get to see that, you know. I'm going to be I'm telling you. But I had to tell her, I said, I'm doing this out of respect. I'm not trying to be disobedient or disrespectful, but if you punch me yelling at me about something that I don't have the same perspective in her, can you teach me what you mean? I'm talking about like she was living in that shade, she's going to make me feel like I had to wear the hair. So this is what we're doing. Good question. You need to practice the five things in life. Here we go. Um, okay. I'm going to try to read this a little bit. I'm going to have to practice. I'm going to try to look at that a little bit. I'm going to try to come back to it. All right. How do you respect your peers? It's easier to respect other people when you respect yourself. Yeah, everybody just say, so when you're around people, the best way to respect them is to make sure you're eye contact, body language is there, but let them know you're not sharing them, and they don't have to be sharing with you. Does that make sense? Sometimes the best way to respect other people is to let them know that 
I'm not a threat to you, but I also know how to protect myself. Does that, does that make any sense? Respect, I'm going to tell you the word respect. You just want to have a great job, too. Read means to repeat. Respect means to look. I respect it. All right? Respect it, right? So read look again. That means respect means to consistently observe. The best way to respect other people, observe the way you say to them about it. You sit and learn from them before we talk about it. How to respect your parents. Easy. I want you to observe and before you ask the question, and sometimes we will repeat back with our parents, ask them do you have permission to ask the question. Okay? Sometimes when you're asking a question without the permission, some parents think it's talking about. Mm -hmm. okay? So I'm just gonna tell you what I do when I was young kid. My mom was upset, I couldn't just ask a question in the middle of her telling me anything she thought it was talking about. Alright, so this is my strategy. Try it out. Say, Mom, I'm gonna hear you. Mm -hmm. 
Mel, how you is? Ten. Ten years of age. Mel, I'm smart. I'm beautiful. I'm handsome. I'm intelligent. I'm going to make I'm talking about you say it over and over and over again. And I'll tell you why. The difference between the education program and the education, you know what you're saying. Program, you say that you don't know what you're talking about. How many of y'all heard the song over and over again? You know the lyrics, but you still don't know what the song is about. Some of y'all ever talk, you still don't know what the song is about. Wow. Everybody <laughs> plays the same thing every day, right? And guess what? The radio plays the same thing every day. You repeat them, you know what I'm saying? They mean you need to be on the radio after a while. You need to say positive things about yourself every day. You know, keep going on the wrong side of the time. I'm pretty sure you're already going to sit with the radio. All right. Okay. Why was my purpose in life to be a basketball player? What if I'm supposed to be a bishop? And my, my purpose is to live in God's world. Beautiful question. Beautiful question. Like I said before, you're good at something. Just because you benefit from something doesn't mean that you're um, your definition. Uh -huh. You know, remember? You played basketball. You weren't born to it. You played football. But things you play doesn't mean that's why you're born. That you don't understand that. Let's keep going. How do you not have a place? You need to make sure you go to sleep at night, you ran your bed on your phones, or you have a suggestion to put your phones in the living room, outside the room. Uh -huh. Because there's nothing easier than to turn over and scroll for about an hour and a half, and that's when you know you want to talk about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it gets to a point now where you do have to admit you are a victim to our big charts. Everybody, young and old. When we admit something, we can change it, all right? How can I be successful in life? Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Invest in the things that invest in you. What builds your culture? Why does the world have a big blind spot that you can't see? Get on the ground. Get on the ground. What builds your culture? You find out things that are valuable to you and you don't look away until you accomplish your own. It takes practice. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give you something. Your generation is the most distracted generation the earth has ever seen. <laughs> and I'm not saying that about you. You have the most distraction that you have to deal with. Uh -huh. When I was your age, I didn't have half the stuff that I could deal with. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Did not have a cell phone on my head. Uh -huh. I didn't have cable like that. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So y'all were part of so many different messages all day, you know what I mean? You were more help to deal with. Y'all feel me? You were going to need more help because you got more devices that you have to deal with. All right? Two more. All right. Um, okay, this is the same. I'll read it. It says, Choose your way to wisely, respect other people, be motivated, be truthful, respect other people, be kind to one another, stay strong, love, respect around yourself. All right. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Okay. And I'll read one last one. All right. Okay. Really, how do I look for the right friends? What? I look for the right friends. Beautiful question. What did I tell you earlier? Your friends, they inform and they educate, right? Your friends do not compromise your free will. You hear your that? friends do not turn you into a follower. You hear me? 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 Friends do not pressure you to do something you know is wrong. Friends are not pressuring you. They invite you, they inform, they educate you. Oh, they support you. You can support yourself. They only support you when it's something that's righteous. You know what I'm saying? Friends don't help you do something that's wrong. Right. You know what I'm saying? You hear me? Somebody tell me what I just said. What did he just say? Did you hear What did he just say? Thank you. You repeat it again. What did he say? Friends don't encourage you to do one. Take care of something bad. You were wrong with Paul, but that's simple. You were wrong with Paul. You were wrong with Paul. They don't help you to do things that can destroy your life. Friends don't help you disrespect your parents. Friends don't help you disobey your teachers. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? We have to be careful with that title because we're calling people who are not our parents our friends. I'm going to give you an example. You know how many old people that I live with? 